Um, so I have my two big EDF planes. Uh, this one is my MB339. It is a 105 millimeter EDF. Uh, this one is 120 millimeter by HSD. So that one's Aeroform, this one is HSD. And one of the things when I first was trying to buy one of these was deciding whether or not I go with an Aeroform or go with an HSD. Um, and as I once I got both of them, I realized there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, the big thing is is Aeroform. The big thing that Aeroform's got going for it is the foam. The foam is which probably makes it heavy, but the foam is really really thick. So when you pick up a wing, you really you recognize how big that you know how much uh, weight that foam has. That HSD um, seems to be a lot more brittle. So um, over there in the tail, uh, there is a crack from pushing it in my car and it tapping a seatbelt. Wow. And it just fell off. The piece just fell off and I glued it a couple times and um, uh, this time I pulled it out of my car and that piece was missing. Yep. So I, somewhere it fell off again. So this is, that's the third time that, that one piece has fallen off after gluing it twice. It went um, MIA. Huh? It went yeah, MIA. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. That's fine. Um, so the foam quality on the Aerofoam ones are much better. Um, I'm assuming it makes it heavier, uh, but it definitely is um, a lot more beefy, you know. Um, so you can definitely tell that this thing in terms of the foam seems to be a little bit denser and a little bit higher quality. On this one, um, the foam is um, a lot more brittle and a lot lighter. So, I mean, it probably makes it fly better, which quite honestly, yeah, I think it does fly better. Um, but it is um, a lot more gentle, you gotta be a lot more gentle with it. Um, the good thing that this thing has going for it, I'm gonna take this off, is the, I think we call it an MFC, and it's their controller. So that controller is where all the servos, all the stuff plugs into, um, including the lights, uh, the gear, and the brakes. So it's all being controlled by this. So on that particular plane, I've got individual servos going to my receiver. So I actually got 12 channels. I'm using 12 channels of, my, of, um, of control for, for that one to put everything in. Because what I do is I put everything in individually. You know, so each aileron's on its own port. You can wire it, but I just prefer to put it into each, um, port. each channel, into a, into a separate channel to do my mixes. Over here, you've got your MFC control board and everything plugs into that and then through that, you can actually do rates, you can do mixes. So if you want, for example, a, um, a flap to elevator mix, you can actually do it in there. You can adjust your rates in there. You can do a bunch of different stuff inside that unit and not do it on your transmitter. Um, is that good or bad? I don't know, it's, it's pretty damn good. But honestly, I don't do that. I like to do everything in my transmitter if I can. Um, the one thing that's nice is the lights light also go into there. So I can assign lights to a channel and turn my lights on and off. You know? Nice. Um, the only thing I did um, on this one is I, like I said earlier, I put my, I put the AG63 gyro in here, and now because of that, it's a little bit different than, as to how it's wired because I have to bypass the brake controller that's built into the MFC, and um, uh, and use my use the uh, AG63 as a brake controller. Um, so that's a little bit different. The wiring's not as clean because. Um, it, it's not all going to the MFC and then one wire going to the receiver. I'm using FreeSky, and FreeSky is compatible with um, SBUS, which is a Futaba uh, protocol. And uh, the SBUS is essentially one wire that has all your channels. And so in my receiver, I've got one wire going to it, but I got a couple of extra ones because I got the brake controller not running through the MFC. Which is worth having. Yeah, I think so. I think it is. Um, so um, that's what's nice. On this one, the main problem with this is everything is individual wires, individual servos. And the thing that is not so great about it is the wiring. So there used to be a shelf over here, and that's where like your different things go. So in order to do, say, brakes or your retracts or your gear, they have these little circuit boards and they pop onto that. Now I wanted more room into the fuselage to fit different size batteries. I went back down to these um, SMCs. Uh, SMCs, which are smaller. Um, so it's not as critical. I didn't have to do it, but when I was running the previous batteries, 
they were 8,000 milliamp batteries. I wanted more flight time. And so because of that, I needed more room. And so I shoved all those different components onto the side of the fuse so I can put the battery in there. Okay. Um, so um, because of that, it's just like a wiring mess in there, but it does work. But you've got an individual brake controller, an individual, and I, again, I bypassed that, put the uh, AGC-63 gyro, I'm using that as a uh, brake controller. But you've got a door sequencer, you've got um, uh, a brake, um, you know, thing, and you've got your gear door, or your gear and your gear sequencer, your gear door sequencer. So you've got a bunch of different devices that you have to like hook up and you know get you know um, running right so there's just a lot of wires in there. So it's more complicated it as It is a lot more complicated. That MFC makes a big difference on the big planes. It really does. And so you've got if you look at it then between the two you've got this one that has better quality foam and you got this one that has the MFC which makes a big difference. You know the other thing that uh, the big difference between these two is so this one is, um, I think they're distributed by Banana Hobbies. And Banana Hobbies has made it a point, it seems, to um, get the reputation better. <laughs> um, so what they're doing is they're, they're stocking all the different parts. So one of those fins, one of those little tail fins, um, um, the lower ones, um, I lost. Pulled it, pulled it out of my car, fell off, and I couldn't find it. Ordered another one, fine, you know? Uh, so that's what's nice is you can get parts for it. HSD doesn't seem to like to stock a lot of parts. So, for example, on my ME262, my twin 90 ME262 from uh, HSD, you can buy the plane and you can buy some retract parts and a couple of like uh, like small pieces. But if you damage the body and you want another wing or another tail fin like that one, I need a tail fin for can't get it so I could either um, so for this particular plane they have a kit and a kit you can buy all the foam and then you can transfer parts over but you're gonna spend six hundred dollars yeah plus tax plus shipping you know yeah so you gotta spend six hundred bucks for the for a sixty dollar part yeah you know for a little part that you know like whatever so that that to me is like kind of like unacceptable like come on can't I mean I'm assuming you're making money on, on all these pieces on these parts so why not supply it I, I don't understand that on the ME262, you can't even buy the kit. So it comes, the plane all together, and you can buy some parts, but you cannot buy body parts. And so, to me, it's kind of inexcusable for um, a big manufacturer that's making these, quote, very high, like, you know, they're high end, you know, like these things that are expensive, and you can't maintain it. Yeah. You know, so I think you can buy all the gear parts, you can buy a couple of like the, you know, like like a lot of the small parts, but you can't buy body uh, pieces. For this one, I just, I took a look. You can buy the uh, canopy. That's it. <laughs> you know, and landing gear, parts landing and gear. servo connectors, but no servos. Also on um, any of my big planes, I'm using the, the Free Sky system over here. And this is a... Uh, um, um, like pretty damn good because what they do is they have these receivers and the receivers are um, both 2.4 uh, gigahertz and 915 megahertz. So one receiver actually has two different frequencies in it, completely different frequencies. Um, and so the 915 is really good for long range and the 2.4 is, is better for the short range and you can have more channels on it. The main problem with 2.4 is everything runs on 2.4. So Everyone. like everything, Wi-Fi runs on 2.4 and a bunch of other like, you know, like consumer devices do. So that can get flooded. And when that gets flooded, this will automatically switch over. The other thing that I did was I'm running two receivers. So I have one receiver over here and I have an S bus connection to another receiver. And the other receiver is just a small receiver um, and essentially duplicates the functions of the main receiver. But that small receiver, um, um, is also 2.4 and 915. So this plane actually has six antennas in it. It's got, wow. each receiver has two, um, for diversity, it's got two 2.4 gigahertz antennas, and it's got one 915 antenna. So um, in terms of redundancy, if this thing goes down, it's my fault. Yeah. You know, so that's what's nice is I don't have to worry about, you know, um, uh, problems that a lot of people here have with, um, you know, like, oh, my radio, like, all of a sudden, I just Signal lost control. Loss, yeah. 
you know, this whatever whatever happens, that's not going to happen for for here because I'm running two redundant receivers with redundant frequencies on it. Very nice. So that's the way you should go with these big jets anyway. Yeah, you got to do something like on Spectrum, people run remote receivers. And a remote re receiver is another receiver with antenna, so you can do that with Spectrum. Um, with this, this is about the safest way. I haven't had one hit, one problem. And a lot less Ever since I've been running the system. And a lot less expensive than Spectrum. It's much cheaper. The receiver, the main receiver that I'm using is a TDR-10. Uh, the TDR-10 is 10 channels. Um, and that receiver is, I think, $56. Wow. The remote receiver does um, uh, is capable so, oh, when I say 10 channels, that's 10 channels, 10 server outputs. But with SBUS, you could run 16 or 24, depending on which version of SBUS you're running. So you can run 16 or 24 channels. And the X, the other remote receiver that I have um, is the same way, except it, it just doesn't have outputs for, you know, like plugging directly servos. And I think you can do four channels on that. But hmm. the same thing, it's got 16 or 24. Nice. So... And by the way, we try to do a comparison video between these two. This one, the this one this flew like awesome. And this one, I got it up in the air, it dropped down, and then all of a sudden trims off all over the place. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on, I'm trying to trim it, and uh, found out that after a while, uh, once I deployed full flaps, I realized the flaps themselves, one of the flaps wasn't working. So it was stuck half down, that was trim, uh, messing up the trim, and I uh, luckily was able to uh, land it uh, but that was a uh, really, really scary. That, that was a so, really scary flight. Now I have this plane, which is down uh, for flap servo, and I'm not sure what the servo is. I'll take it apart and see if I can figure out what the what the servo is. If not, I'll call them. But it's not listed on their site um, a servo. Um, but hopefully they can tell me what servo it is. And my 262 is down because the ESC um, is not working on one of the engines. Um, so that one uh, looks like it's a fly color um, ESC, but I'll call them up and see if I can uh, get them to do something about it. But it'd be nice if those parts were available on their site. Yeah. You know, like I could just order it. It's like, you know what, I, I don't care about warranty. It's not about that. You know, like getting something for free. It's about getting my plane up and running as quickly as possible because yep. I want to freaking fly it. Yeah, we want to fly it. You know, so little things like that, like this is not, and I get it, this is not... You know horizon hobbies which has millions and millions of dollars and they you know have all the parts available which by the way a lot of times they don't because everything's on back order um, but at least they have it on their site you can actually you know um, order it or see that it's not available um, so uh, i guess we could talk a little bit about like flight characteristics um, besides the fact that today this thing like almost made me pee my pants um, it's got an amazing roll rate um, it's got really, it's, it, it flies really good and it lands so smooth. Very well. It's such an easy, and I think it's because it's got a big wing. Uh, this one, I think, flies heavier. Now, this could go back to what we were talking about earlier. The foam is denser on this one, probably weighs more in comparison to its size, but, you know, the landing is um, a little bit, I'm not going to say it's hard, it's not hard to land this thing. But this one is butter smooth because it's got so much wing, I can slow this thing down. This one comes in a little bit hot. So that's, the, I guess, what you, the, 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 you know, the sort of like the difference that you see. You get better foam, a little bit heavier, but the wing loading is higher. This right. one, light wing loading, the foam quality is crap. It's very brittle, as you can tell by the tail, but it lands super smooth because it's got such light wing, wing loading. So that's um, why it's such a hard comparison. It really is. Between and, you the know, two. They're, they're different planes. This is a 105. This is a 120. They are different planes, but the, the thing is, is um, you can see the difference. And honestly, in terms of quality, the electronics at MFC in there makes a huge difference. That thing is awesome. You know, I just wish that HSD would stock more parts on their website and make it available to us who just want to fly. So it's like, I lose a part, I, you know, something breaks. I don't care about fixing it for warranty. I care about getting it up and running. Yeah, you make a beautiful plane, but yeah. you know, want to keep it running in the air yeah, or I flying in the air. Yeah. You know, so like, like to me, it's not about warranty. It's not about that. It's about having the parts available as part numbers. I can say, okay, T33 uh, flap servo. Okay, now I order a flap servo. Is it, is, uh, uh, is it the left or the right flap? Are they doing, um, do they have reverse ones? 
you know, like, is it a reverse servo or a regular servo? It's like, it's just a little bit annoying. Yeah, it's a Metal Gear yeah. digital, I mean. Yeah, so anyways, um, that's it. Like, I, I would say both of them fly sweet. I would say I would give the nod to the T-33 as a more enjoyable flying experience by just that much. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say that this is a horrible flying experience. It's awesome. You know, but I'd say the flying experience on this one because the landing's so much easier. I would say that this one and like the roll rate is phenomenal for such a big plane on this one. So I would say that like I would say the T33. If you're going to get one of these, T33. You know, Between the uh, two. just be careful because you don't want to crash it. <laughs> you know, like either that, you're going to be buying six hundred dollars worth of foam to fix your sixty dollar piece of whatever that broke. Yeah. You know, um, or you have to find a way to repair it, like that tail, and have to figure, figure out a way to repair that. You know, so anyways, um, that's all I got for uh, for these for this video. But yeah, again, I, I think both of them are great planes. Um, I think that one, if it had better electronics or, or better management system, uh, would be would just escalate and make this thing so much better. Um, but again, foam. The big difference is is in the foam, in my opinion. This one, once you get over the fact that you have to, uh, like, you know, kind of move things around to get a bigger battery to fit, you can, like, you know, that's a one-time thing. But once it's done, it's done. Yep. This yep. one, it's super setup. organized with an MFC. But um, I would think that if we can get, like, a, like, sort of like a better foam on this one, it might not land as easy um, or as smooth or whatever, but um, I think it'd make a big difference in terms of handling and, you know, like trying to transport the plane and watching it because that foam is really really thin so anyways that's it all right guys